Hi, it's Phil from Teach Blend, and today we're going to look at a tool called Flipgrid and how we can use this to engage learners. Flipgrid essentially is a video response based system. So what you can do is you can add a topic or a question to students and they can respond via video using their mobile device. It's a great tool because it really engages the students and offers an alternative assessment method. So it might be that you're asking students to do a book review. Rather than having the students write out a book review response, what they can do is scan a simple QR code that you've created and they can use their mobile dev device to respond to that book review and add their thoughts. It really empowers students' voice. What we're going to do now though is we're going to have a quick look at Flipgrid, how to set it up and then we can ha have a look at some other ways we can use Flipgrid in our lessons. So the first thing we're going to do is navigate to Flipgrid, click Educator Sign Up and then Sign In. You can choose either Google or Microsoft to do this. I'm using Microsoft in this example. Once you have done this, it will prepare your Flipgrid and bring any grids if you've already signed in. Just going to click Add New Grid. And a new grid is essentially like a class, but it can also be a collection or a topic, for example, as well. In most cases, a grid is a class. You can then choose a, a Flipgrid type. The most common use is probably school email, and this is in this example what we're gonna use. This allows students to add to your grid using their school email addresses as authentication. You can also change the Flipgrid cloud to make it a little bit easier. Once done, you'll need to add in the school email addresses that students can use or staff to add to your grid. You can also then copy the grids so that you can have easier access or embed it, share it to Google Classroom, or add it to your Microsoft team or Remind. We're just gonna click go to grid now, and as you can see, my grid's created. I'm gonna click add new topic now, and a topic is essentially something you want the students to do. It might be a question, for example, a book review. You can then choose a maximum recording time for how long the response video will be from your students or audience. You can also add a prompt, now the prompt's useful to add the question and prompt the students for their response. So this is where you would add what you want the students to do. In focus, this is optional, but helps the students contextualize their learning and their prompt. So it might be that you're adding a YouTube video that you want the students to also discuss in their response. And there is more options as well. You can add a topic tip to give some students some pointers and also add attachments, maybe a Word document, for example, includes a script. You can also add topic statuses to put video moderation on and have freeze dates and launch dates. You can also enable and disable various video features such as video editing and selfies. In here, you can also change how the feedback will be displayed to the students and give custom feedback if needed. Once I've done, you can also share the topic. Now, sharing the topic will directly link the students to that individual topic within your class slash grid. And you can create a QR code so they can scan this on their phones. And again, you have the same options where you can share to Google Classroom, Teams, etc. Once the topic has been created, you'll see that you have options such as view a student, add topic guests, share, actions where you can edit and add extra things into the topic or delete for example and you can also quickly do this by clicking the edit topic i'm going to click view a student now so you can see what this topic looks like with the students you will also see that url has changed so that it's an exact link of what the students will see so i'm just going to log in now to my account and this is how the students would view your topic and grid as you can see the topic is within the grid so now as a student viewing this, I would click the plus button in the green circle to record my response. What this will do now is open up my web camera and allow me to start recording a response in the video. You can also add text, filters, stickers, drawings, a whiteboard and a photo sticker in the response. As a student, what I'm going to do now is click the record button in the middle and record my video response to the topic. There is some extra options in the top right hand side that you can also add. So I'm just going to pause my response and I can click add sticky note or also show the topic if I forgot what I am recording about. You can then re-record the video and carry on. So you can pause, stop, pause, stop the response. When you click next, if enabled, the editor will come up 
which allows the students to trim and edit any response to their video they're not happy with. And they can also add some more if they needed to. Once done, you can then move this around and position it how you need. Click next and here you will record a response selfie. And this is like for the thumbnail on the grid for the teacher. The students will also have access to filters, text, stickers that they can put an emoji over their face for example if they were a bit shy and draw in the whiteboard and photo stickers as well. I'm going to click next now I'll then upload my response to the teacher. I can also add a title and a link as well and submit my video. Here I will have options to download my video and selfie. To the teacher view as you can see now I can look at that response, I can make it active, I can edit the response and I can delete as well if needed to. I'm going to click my students response now and I can use the grading rubric to grade this video response and add any comments to the student. I can also email this feedback and copy a feedback link. In here I can edit the details and I can also create a shareable link to that video. I can spark it if it is good or add it to the mixtape. One of the really cool features in Flipgrid is if you click on the print QR, it will create QR codes for all of the students' responses and it will use Flipgrid AR to do this. So if you opened up Flipgrid AR app and scanned this QR code, the students' response would come up in augmented reality on the paper. And this is great, for example, for EVs, if they are coming in to look at students' video responses, you could have the QR codes printed out and the EV could just scan these. It's also great for interactive displays. For example, if you were doing a book review, you could have the students' responses on a display around the book. And then what you could do is they could scan in those QR codes and you could hear the students' responses on the display reviewing that particular book. So what I want to do now is just show you how it looks within the app. So if the students download Flipgrid app, they can use the Flipgrid code to go directly to their class slash grid, or they can scan in the QR code. Again, this could be for either the topic or the grid. And remember, the grid has the topics inside. They can then log in to the Flipgrid app by using either Google or 365 to authenticate to the grid. Once done, you'll see here the responses that have already been added into the grid and the plus button they can then use to record their response directly into your topic slash grid. This works just like the app that I'd shown you previously on the desktop, but this time we're using the mobile app. Again, you record the video, add the selfie, and then you can add the description, the name, etc. as well. Click submit video as always and then here you can see you can download the video as well and there you can see the extra response added into that class. Final thing I want to show you is just how you scan in a Flipgrid QR code for the augmented reality section. So remember if you've printed off some QR codes and you want to view these in augmented reality, open up the scan Flipgrid QR code, scan over the Flipgrid QR and as you can see here in augmented reality it is coming over the top of the screen or piece of paper. I hope you found that useful and if you would like to follow me on Twitter it's Phil at EdTech and don't forget to subscribe to TeachBlend by clicking the TeachBlend link. Thank you.